Hey, it's Coach Reeves. Today we're going to solve radical equations. Uh, before we get too deep into it, I'm going to ri uh, remind you of a couple of rules, okay? Number one, you cannot take the even root of a negative number, okay? Can't take the even root of a negative number. The even root cannot equal a negative number, okay? And so when we solve these, when you solve radical equations, you need to make sure you check for extraneous solutions. And extraneous solutions are ones that fall under these categories of rule number one and two. Now you'll understand these better as we work these, but I'm gonna tell you that you have to check for extraneous solutions, okay? All right, so in problem number one, very simple stuff. You're gonna like these, I think, compared to some of the stuff we've done. All right, so I wanna make this radical disappear. So to make the radical disappear, I'm going to square this, okay? Remember how we said, if the root matches the exponent, what is underneath drops out, all right? So since the root matches the exponent, the x will drop out. But if I square the left side of the equation, I have to square the right side of the equation. And that would give me a 25. So to make that square root disappear, I square it. Simple enough, let's keep going. Here, same thing. I wanna square my radical, because it's a square root, okay? So we're gonna square this side. We're gonna square this side. And this is gonna drop out, and this is gonna be x squared minus three equals seven. You're going to add 3 to both sides. You're going to say plus 3, plus 3. That's going to give you x squared equals 10. You need to take the square root. You're going to take the square root, and you're going to get x equals a positive negative, and I cannot simplify that, so that's going to stay the square root of 10. Simple enough, okay? Let's keep going. They get a little harder, not much, okay? In this situation, I wanna get my radical portion by itself. So before you square anything, get your radical by itself. So we're gonna move the seven. We're gonna go minus seven, minus seven. This is gonna cancel. We're looking at the square root of 3s minus 3. That's going to equal s minus 7. Now we're ready to square. And this one is a little bit trickier, a little more detailed. I'm going to come in. I'm going to square this side. And then I have to square this side. We're going to put this in parentheses. And we're going to square it. Okay? Okay. This will drop out. This will drop out as 3s minus 3. However you want to do this, you can box this, you can foil this. You could come over here and say s minus 7 times s minus 7. But you're going to have to square this. You're going to have to multiply this parentheses times itself. And you're going to end up with s squared minus 7s minus another 7s plus 49. You will combine like terms and get a negative 14s. So you're going to end up with equals s squared minus 14s plus 49. Now what I need to do is I need to move everything to one side and solve. So we need to come in and we need to say minus 3s, minus 3s, plus 3, plus 3. That will leave me with 0 equals s squared minus 17s plus 52. We need to factor that, okay? 
So we're going to factor this into two parentheses. This tells us that the signs are going to be the same. This tells us they're both going to be minuses. So we're going to put minus and minus in the parentheses. We're going to break down s squared times s times s. But I have to break down my 52. That is a positive 52. And that means we're going to add to find our top, our our, work, our numbers here, okay? So we're gonna add to find what we're gonna work with. So I've got one times 52, two times 26. Three does not work, but I have four times 13. That's what we wanna work with. Those are my two numbers, okay? So we're going to put in, because 4 plus 13 is 17, we're going to put our 4 here, we're going to put our 13 here. Because this is an equation, we're going to solve them. And when we solve, you put each factor equal to 0, but you're going to end up with a 4 and a 13. This is just like we did in the fall when we had to solve by factoring. Now here's the big thing. You have to check for extraneous solutions. I have to substitute my 4 and my 13 to see if they work. So I'm going to go up here to my original equation, okay? And I'm going to put my numbers are, remember what my numbers are, 4 and 13. My numbers are 4 and 13. Let me just erase some of this stuff. And you're going to substitute those in. I'm going to put a 4 here. And I'm going to put a 4 here. And we have to see if that makes a true statement. Okay? 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 3 is 9. What's the square root of 9? The square root of 9 is 3. See, that's 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 3 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 plus 4, I mean 3 plus 7, does that equal 4? This does not make a true statement. 3 plus 7 is 10. 10 does not equal 4. It doesn't check. This is a bad answer. Not a good answer. Okay? Let's go up and try the 13. All right, so we're going to substitute in the 13. Three times 13 is 39. 39 minus three is 36. What's the square root of 36? Six. Six plus seven is 13. See, that's 6 plus 7, and that's 13. This checks. This is a good answer. 13 is the only good answer. You have to check both answers. You have to check for extraneous solutions to see which one makes a true statement or not. Okay? One more problem. When we have a situation like this, there's a few examples on the test, like are on your worksheet, excuse me. You have to separate your radicals. You can't work with them on the both sides of the equation. We're going to move this radical to the other side. We're going to add this. We're going to say plus the square root of x, plus the square root of x. Now I'm looking at the square root of x plus 2 excuse me, 12, equals the square root of x plus 2. Now, you don't have to put the square root of x in front, but it's, I, I think it's easier when you put the variable portion in the front part. Okay? So look what we're going to have to do. Now, this is going to happen is we're going to have to square both sides. This is the advanced part. This is why you're a pre-AP student. Okay? So you're going to square this 
and you're going to square this as a whole. You have to put parentheses around it. You have to square this. This will just drop out. This will drop out as x plus 12. But just like we did a while ago, we're going to have to break this off to the side, and you can either box this or you can foil this. Okay? So we're looking at the square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x plus 2. Okay? This problem takes a few steps. When we multiply, the square root of x times the square root of x drops out. It's going to be just a regular x. Okay? And then we take the square root of x times 2, and that's going to give me two square roots of x. This, when I multiply it here, is going to give me another two square roots of x. And then when I multiply it here, this is going to give me a positive 4. We're going to combine my terms. And so I have x plus 4 square roots of x plus 4. Okay? This is kind of the tricky part. This is kind of hard. Now look what happens. I'm going to try to move. I'm going to try to move this x. I'm going to go minus x minus x. And they cancel. And so I have 12 equals 4 square roots of x plus 4. Now, I'm trying to solve my equation. I'm going to try to solve for the variable x. So to do this, I'm going to move the 4. I'm going to go minus 4, minus 4, 8 equals 4 square roots of x. I still want to get the radical portion by itself, so I'm going to divide by 4. Let me move this just a little bit. I'm going to divide by 4, and I get 2 equals the square root of x. Now, we saw this on the very first problem. We had something that looked like this. What we're going to do is we're going to square this to make the x drop out, but we'll have to square this side also. So I get an x equals 4. Now, I still need to check to see if this is a good answer. If this comes out to be true, yes, we're good, yay. But if this does not make a true statement, I would have to cancel it, and I would have to say no solution. So we're going to take the 4 and go back to the original problem. And here's my original problem. Let me erase some of this so we can work it. We're going to substitute in the 4. We're going to substitute in the 4. 4 plus 12. 4 plus 12 is 16. What is the square root of 16? Well, the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 4 minus 2. Does that equal 2? Yes, that makes a true statement. 4 is a good answer. Okay, you have to have to check for extraneous solutions. Let me see if I have one more problem maybe to practice on. Yes, we do. But now we're not dealing with square roots, we're dealing with a cube root. Still pretty simple. We're still under that guideline that is, if the root matches the exponent, whatever's in the radical drops out. So in this case, my root is 3. To make this disappear, I will have to cube this side. And if I cube the left side of the equation, I must cube the right side. Now, the root matches the exponent. So what is in the radical just drops out. This would be 3x minus 1. When I cube this, and I say negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, that will equal negative 27. I add 1 to both sides. I get 3x equals negative 26. 
I divide by 3, and I get x equals negative 26 over 3. Here's the question. I need to substitute it in to see if it's going to make a true statement. So let's go ahead and step over here and do this. We have some more room. I have the cube root of 3 times somebody minus 1, and that equals negative 3. Now remember, this is an odd root. This is not an even root, so it can equal a negative number. That's the big difference, but this is an odd root. What did we come up with as our answer? Negative 26 over 3. Now when you multiply, when we're multiplying here, the 3's will cancel, and I get negative 26 minus 1 is a negative 27. The cube root of negative 7, does it equal negative 3? Yes. Negative 3 equals negative 3. This checks. So my answer down here of negative 26 over 3, it checks that is a good answer. Okay? So a couple of things. It starts out kind of easy. The key thing you need to remember is you want to get the root to match the exponent so what's in the radical will drop out. Okay? And then after that, you have to make sure that you check for extraneous solutions and you have to remember the rules that the square root cannot equal a negative number or we cannot take the square root of a negative number right now. Got it? All right, try what you, what you can on the worksheet, see what you can do, and if you get stuck, just ask us. Good luck.